I wonder if Joe Lake and the company have already called him because rumors were that they hadn't been negotiating together. Now that the window's open, are both groups going back to the table? How's that conversation going? Hey, Clay, remember that two for 48? Well, here's three for 70. What about that? I don't know. I'm just throwing numbers out there. Yeah. But I, I, I do wonder how that conversation is going right now because that window is open. Like, because if they really wanted Clay Thompson, the announcement come in June 30th or whatnot, Clay Thompson gets this or that. But according to Sham Sharania, he's going to test the waters. He's going to test the waters. I just wonder what the Warriors are going to do right now. Or do they even want them back? Are they ready to move on? Are they ready to tweak the system? I don't know. I, it, this one's a really tough one to read. Um, it, it does feel like, and you keep referencing Joe Lacob, it sure as heck feels to me like we've entered, especially with Bob Myers not here and everything, like this, this really... This is really now on ownership to kind of reshape, pivot, and and see where we're going here. This is the last embers of the dynasty. It's burning out. Right? We can all see it. It's not going to last forever. The bonfire will end at some point. But how you kind of pivot here late, I I think it is all on 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 Joe Lake. I mean, he's the one who kept Draymond, you know, and he admitted that to us, and he said that over and over again. He is going to make some sort of a decision on Andrew Wiggins. I feel like he's going to be one of the guys to be out the door. Will he come in at the last minute and do what he did with Draymond and, and, and retain Clay Thompson? I don't know. I don't know how the fans will accept that or not accept that. Well, here's what Joe Lacob said back on October 18th of 2023 when he walked into this studio and did an hour with us. Here's what Joe Lacob said about Clay's contract and the big three. Well, I hope it's not a distraction. I mean, we're not in control of this. I mean, there's two sides to every negotiation. We want him back. He wants to be back. It's kind of like Draymond. Right. I think you guys, everyone needs to just chill a little bit. <laughs> Let this take its course. My guess is it works out. Okay. Okay. You know, it, it, I can't control it. I can't dictate it. Uh, you can't dictate it. Right. Fans can't dictate it. These things have to take their course. There's different parties involved, but the intentions are really good. The Draymond situation was different because he had an opt-in and he could opt out if he chose to. True. But do you look back at how that went and and learn any lesson from that? Was it good, bad, indifferent? Was it just business? Like, did that have any tangible effect on the season last year, you think? Oh, it might have, but I don't... I mean, I think, there, look, there were some issues last year with respect to some of the contracts. Some of the other guys got contracts I know you're referring to. Um, maybe. Maybe it did. Um I don't think there's going to be anything like that this year, though. Yeah. I, I really don't. Uh, Clay's a professional. Um, respect him tremendously. And we're, we're going to do our best to get this done. And, yeah. uh, you know, hopefully it is done sooner rather than later, but it might not be. It might not be. How do you think that aged? Well, we'll see. No, no, I mean, well, I mean, like when he said he didn't think that the contract would affect Clay. Right. I oh, it, it did. It felt like it did. Okay. And the role change and everything like that, it felt like it did have an impact on Clay Thompson. No I, doubt about I, it. I, I agree. And everybody needs to just chill. Well, we're chilling now. We're chilling now. And we got to see what's up with this deal. But he also mentioned this because I want to play this one on how important it was for Dre, Clay, and Steph to retire together. Okay, this is Joe Lacob back on October 18th when he came into the studio and did an hour with us here on The Roast. But I will say it's really important to me to have I've, to have the continuity, all right, to have the continuity and to have these guys retire as warriors yes. would be such an amazing thing to have happen. Steph, Clay, Draymond, the three most highly tenured people uh, players in the league, yep. one, two, yep. and three, I believe right now. I'm very proud of that. Very, and we should all be proud of that. And by the way, that's, when I grew up, that was important to have. Yeah. You you knew that these guys were your guys. Yep. They were right. your team. They were always with the team. There wasn't free agency and all that stuff. Now, the world's changed. We all mm -hmm. understand that. And business realities do enter into it sometimes. But look, I would love, more than anything, to keep those three guys here through the entirety of their career. And we're going to try to do that. <laughs> we are brilliant at butt kissing. I mean, oh yep. no, uh -huh. I learned from you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You got a PAC yep. in that yes. bad boy. You're right. Yeah. Oh, I admit it. <laughs> you got a PAC in that I, bad boy. I freely yep, admit it. Yup, 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 Joe. If yes. I could have, I'd have sat on his lap. <laughs> wow, that's, that's a great point. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. Joe, you're so brilliant. I don't know if I'm going that far. <laughs> I'm not going that far.
Uncle Joe, no, Uncle Joe's good people, man. I mean, he's the owner of the team. What are you going to do? Start ripping them? No, nah, John, don't disagree. Nah, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we need jobs around here. <laughs> Joe, wake up, wake up, man. Whoa. Is that Priest? Uh, well, he's too old. Well, let, let, me well, ask, well, let me ask you this one. Okay, go ahead. What do you think people, like, because he said it to us. Draymond essentially said it to us. They've said it to us over and over. He is, the at the end of the day, Draymond is a warrior currently because of Lacob. We can talk about staff. We right. can talk about a lot of different things. Like, I believe in what Lacob said. Trey is here because he wanted him here. Yep. Do you think he regrets or likes that decision a year later? I that, think that he that he ended up being the ultimate decider. Yeah. Um, I don't think he minds that because he told us two years ago that he's involved in every decision. And, you know, a lot of owners, he believes, look, he's, he said it himself, going owner has to be involved. I believe that a great owner of any sports team, actually any organization, needs to be very involved. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean they're making the decisions for mm -hmm. people. You let people, you empower them, you let them make decisions, you let them make some mistakes. But the truth is, you have to be involved and know everything that's going on. If you don't, you're not going to be successful. You're just not. It's really all about the details. It's not about the one big thing like everyone thinks. It's all about the details in every respect. And so if I'm going to own this organization, this business, and be involved, and Peter's going to be involved, we're going to know what's going on so that we can make good decisions right. when people bring to us things like, hopefully, the new name of the women's WNBA team. And so we got that name to go to St. Valkyries right there, right? Joe Lake have already given us a little dime there. But but he he's involved, and he's told us just, for three years in a row now that he was involved with the Kelly Oubre deal. And he's like, look, man, I, I made that decision. And you know what? Do I regret it? I was just trying to win, but I learned my lesson or whatnot. But does he regret the Draymond deal? No, I don't think he does. I don't think he does. He looks at Draymond Green. And he loves Draymond Green. Draymond Green's meant a lot to this organization. We can't, we could talk about it too. We're blue in the face. We know what's going on on the court. We know about the suspensions. We know about some of the things he says on the podcast. We get all that. But we also can't forget that he does mean a lot to this organization. And he's one of the four, he's a four time champ. And that jersey is going to be retired in the rafters. So for Joe Lacob, there is a soft side to it because he brought him his greatest joy. He brought him to the mountaintop, helped bring him to the mountaintop. So I don't think he regrets it as of now. But focusing on Clay Thompson for a second here, he has said over and over that Clay Thompson will retire. He told us this two years in a row. Clay Thompson will retire and go to a member as a go to state warrior. He will retire as a warrior. So now we're here, and a lot of people don't think, you know, some people think Clay's going to be back. Clay's going to be back. Is it going to be a nostalgia tour? Can you bring Clay back and compete at a high level? I am I guarantee you Dunleavy and company are talking about this right now. It just feels very different from the Draymond opt-out last year. And 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 maybe it's because of the just the straight-up the social media unfollowing well, stuff and... The Shams reports, which we don't even right. know if they're coming directly from Clay Thompson or the people that are representing Clay Thompson, but it, this one just feels a little different. Well, I feel like Clay's market is bigger. Number one, yeah. I think he's more desired outside of the organization, and um, I don't know. It, it, this it, just feels different. It just does. Well, to well me. it's funny. It's funny because Clay's a little more quiet, and I just remember out there at Lakers series when they lost in six, Kerr. And Draymond and all the reports, they were adamant that Draymond's going to be back. Draymond's going to be back. Remember, it was mm -hmm, like, they mm -hmm. banging on the table, like, Draymond's going to be back. Now, they've also said some similar things about Clay Thompson. But it just, it does feel different. Right? It does feel different because Draymond had an opt-out. Mm -hmm. He could have opted in. Clay's an unrestricted free agent, free to talk to anybody that he wants to. You know, it, it's it, the thing I always think about, like, uh, you, you've said over and over that, it's not a catch-all, but you like when athletes have a contract year that you think you're going to get the best out of them. Yeah, and, and not that it's it's always going to work. Right, but right, that, right, the, right, right. The, but your principle is like I, I I'm not mad with having a contract year because I think it forces athletes, uh, coaches, whatever, to be on their p's and q's. But there are certain individuals, and I think about this one, like I, I think about the mental. Uh, the mental frame of sports, which I don't think we talk enough about, just where you're at mentally. And like Clay Thompson, more than any, and I underrated how in his own dome he can get. And, and I don't think this is bad, good, or different. Like when he's riding high, he's riding real high. When he's riding low, he's riding low. It really, I think it really bothered him 
um, not having it settled. I think he was uneasy almost all year. Um, not that he was gunning to get his money. That's that's not what I'm saying. I just think that he's a guy more than others that, like, I think he needed to feel the comfort. You know, Draymond likes to play on that edge, whether it's the edge of the referees, the edge of exploding, whatever, the edge of a contract yeah. situation. Whereas I do feel like Clay Thompson needs a little more of the stability, more of the pat on the back. Like, you, you can't treat them all the same. No, you can't. No, Clay... Especially post injury, yes. where he's in his own dome. Yes, post injury, Clay. You know where he's in his own dome, and he's reading all the reports, and he's hearing all the rhetoric, and he's hearing that man, I just led the league and made threes, and I'm washed. What the hell is going on here? Didn't you bake in the contract extension? Didn't you bake in the fact that they asked him to adjust his role, not to shot hunt so much, and that didn't work out early on? And he was trying to find himself, and then obviously, obviously the role changed, right? Mm -hmm. So there were so many factors into this contract year where Draymond, you knew he was going to play. The biggest thing that happened with Draymond three, Draymond Green happened in training camp. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the play on the court was solid. It never affected his play on the court, I believe. Draymond Green last year after the Jordan Poole incident. Never affected him. He still played at a high level defensively. Now, do we want him to shoot more? Yes. Do we want him to play, be more uh, uh, be more of an offensive threat? Absolutely. And Steve Kerr touched on that last year saying, yes, we need Draymond Green to be more aggressive offensively. This was a different situation. Where it's like We're talking role changes. Mm -hmm. We're talking about, hey, Ease up off the gas pedal, homie. Don't shoot so much. And he had to shoot because Wiggins wasn't shooting. Well, what you know? also like in in his mind, and I'm I'm backing him in this. Like he feels his way to contribute is shooting. Like that's going to be yep. one of the primary ways in in right. who he is now. That how he can contribute. And when shots aren't falling, I feel like the 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 weight on your shoulders gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And every miss becomes you know like a big. It's a bigger indictment of what you right. aren't. You know, like when you're, well, like for example, I look at someone like PJ Washington who did not have a good series uh, for the shut down. Dallas Mavericks. Shut down. Right, like, like when he's missing shots, it's not a big deal because like no one expects him to miss shots. But we want him to play defense and get some rebounds. So you're not like hovering on every right. missed defensive assignment. But a missed shot and a, and a brick, you know, oh my God, he took it early in the shot clock. Oh my God, that guy was open. Look, his feet aren't set. Like, to me, it's easier to spot out for the casual fan. Right. And I think that uh, that that we just harp on it more and more. Yeah, especially and then, with Clay. Yeah, th that's what I'm Clay saying. So because I, he's a main I'm, man. I'm trying to be empathetic here where I just feel like his way of contributing it is more optical and it's on a platter for people to dissect. Whereas if he was an Iggy role where he's a passer and a facilitator and stuff like that, it's a little more nuanced. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. No doubt. And now he did. Now, did he adjust? Yes. He built a nice little rapport with Trace Jackson Davis with the second unit. Um, I think he realized that, hey, man, coming off the bench isn't the worst thing in the world. He said that over and over and over again. Now, it's up to, for everybody out there to believe it. I believe it. Because Clay Thompson, if anything, he sort of said he is truthful. Like, he wears his, his emotions on his sleeve. He tells it like it is. Clay Thompson hasn't told any lies. He doesn't sugarcoat things. And you know what? We also want our athletes to be human, human, human. These millionaires act like nothing's wrong. Well, Clay Thompson acted like everything was wrong. And you know what? Because he did care. He did care. So I don't know if Joe Lacob. If Joe Lacob is going to change his tune on his situation, I don't know if Steve Kerr is. I don't know what the Warriors are going to do with Klay Thompson, but the window is open 